So, so we are now making milk, um, evaporated milk, something that we consume a lot, or at least I do. Um, to make evaporated milk, as the name suggests, we need to evaporate our milk. And we are starting with fresh milk with um, regular level of content that is 3.25% fat and then 8.5% non-fat solid and the rest of it will be just water and then during the process um 60 percent of our steam will be removed so 60 so percent no 60 percent of the water from the milk will be removed in the form of steam and in our systems here we are keeping the steam at 65 degrees celsius we don't want the temperature to be too high because it may alter the taste of the milk um, so the steam, the milk is going to boil at 65 degrees Celsius. There's a heat exchange, there's a metal, there's a pipe. Um, so I'm just showing you the pipe here. The pipe has a thickness of 4.5 milliliter, 4.5 millimeter. And then the, um, the heat conductivity is 25 watts per square per K and heat is moving in a convection. Um, energy from the steam is given off as it condenses and, and this is happening at 120 degrees Celsius. So over here is 8.5 kilowatt per meter um, Kelvin and inside the the heat transfer efficiency it will be at 1.5 kilowatt per meter K. Okay. okay, so the question is two things. How much steam do we need? How much steam do we need to supply to offer enough to give enough energy for the evaporation of this, the water from the milk? And how long, how, how long is the pipe that we need? So it's two things that we need right here. Um, first of all, let's take a look at energy balance. What is going on? How much water is going to be given away um, for the production of five tons of evapor evaporated milk? So five tons of evaporated milk, 5,000 kilogram, um, original amount of fresh milk, 60% of the steam, will come off so I came up with this equation and I was able to calculate how much of the fresh milk evaporated milk and the amount of steam that is given off so that's using what we've learned in the mass balance and then the second step that we can think of is the, the term in terms of energy balance based on the graph here we have a few things happening we have the milk that is already warm to 65 degrees Celsius. So if we know the enthalpy of this milk plus the energy that is provided by the steam, our end product will be the enthalpy of the evaporated milk. Mind you, the evaporated milk will now have a different concentration of everything. The fat, the protein, the non-fat solid will be of a different temp um, concentration and of course we also have the steam energy so a few things that we have to pay attention to summing up we end up having this equation so now let's look at each component here can we determine the enthalpy in our fresh milk can we determine our energy in our evaporated milk and the energy of the steam then we would know how much heat we will need. And from there on, we will know how much steam we will need. Let's look at each one at a time. 